C. M. Mario. Is he in the game? Hello, hello, my dear Somnatic Amigos. And as I say today on the title of the video, we're going to be talking about tactics. Some ma macro and micro principles of tactics that you can find in your beautiful Championship Manager 102. All right, so the first thing you have to be wary of is that the latest updates are not exactly as gentle as the previous original updates, right? They have some little nuances, little technical adaptations, as you can see. For me, this is like a really badass tactic. I'll get back to that soon. But there are some variations here, and they make the game a little bit more interesting. The thing I like about this is no one is over-abusing the centralization of the machine. They have at least a line of three defenders always and two guys on the wings. Every tactic that you will find all over the shop is going to at least fulfill these principles. One of the big principles of Championship Manager, of course, is that centralized tactics will have a certain advantage. So if you kind of tendentially centralize your tactic, you're going to have a little bit of a more something something, right? But make no mistake, these latest updates have been like pretty badass. Like this is an example, at least a line of three and two guys on the wings, at least nothing crazy, right? Like, like this, for example, as I've seen plenty of times, just people just despising the defense. They don't even have to have anything there. So they just do something crazy. Just go all out one central defender. That's fine. Or just two central defenders. And then they just go all in whatever they want to do, right? I think it's pretty uncool if you do that, but that's just me. I, I would say create your own rules, especially if you're playing alone and if you don't want your long-term save to be boring as fuck. You need to have a little bit of decency here. You know that it, that it favors, but not even the AI in the latest updates is actually over-abusing that situation. So you should be okay with something a little bit more decent. Like, I, I, I always use my... My diamond, as you know, I, ha I have other tactics here that some some of them were asked for a friend of mine to load as well, whatever. But at least like I like to play with the four defenders, keeps it a little bit real. And then I have these two sacred principles always in my tactics, always, which is a centralized defensive midfielder. If there's people bu beside him, doesn't matter. And a centralized striker. These are very, very important fundamentals for your tactics doesn't matter which tactic you play with i think these principles have to be fulfilled and there are plenty of ways that you can actually like get over the machine right so as i was saying for example the most badass tactic in the latest update that i've been playing against is this 451 right there's a lot of uh, already pre-definitions here for the players to make this tactic work of course so there's no web wob on it right it's not like a super shark but the way the thing is displayed with the wings going forward and just the centralized defensive midfielder and this centralized striker make it really really tough to compete against it, it is a solid tactic and it might give you a little bit of work here and there which is good which is good so the idea is choose your tactic it doesn't have to be nothing has to be the same but i i suggest have at least a little bit of decency not just two central defenders and then boom, there's something like this or something crazy. I've seen crazier things even because it will work. It will work if you know what you're doing. It will work like a charm, but it's just too much. It's just kicking the machine in the face and fooling yourself a bit, right? If you're playing with your friends, especially create some rules. Have a, all of you have a badass tactic that is similar, equivalent, the same, doesn't matter so that the tactic is not actually the differential criteria between the two of you or the three of you or the four of you, whatever, how many people are, people are playing. That is my advice, which you do as you wish. Basic principles here of macro tactics are those, I think. Centralized here, centralized there. That is very, very important, right? Then once you choose your tactic, whichever it is, and you do your adaptations or you know that your tactic works, you go into the game, right? And then that's when the micro of the tactic starts to come into place, right? I'm going to do some game here, doesn't matter. So I'm going to try and do an example. Now I deselected the team. Eh, idiot. 
Doesn't matter, I'll just select these guys. I don't know who the fuck is playing now because I haven't been playing this save. I've been playing more online than anything else. To be totally honest, this guy is not... Oh, Bavin is playing. And I'm using my... No. We gotta go... Uh, Diabolds. Alright. Same story so far, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Now... I don't remember. I really don't remember. As you can see, these videos are as organic as, it can, as they can be, or whatever you want to call them. Whatever, let's just do something. Anyway, just to keep, keep, get us rolling on the demonstration, I suppose. Not sure this is going to go 100%, by the way. I'm just, whatever. But the idea is when you're microing your tactics, you have to have some little basic rules. So let's check out our opponents. Our opponents have a centralized striker there and a guy here was an attacking midfielder center. So I'm not going to be too concerned about him. Not saying it's going to be flawless, but it might work. Another thing is the weather is dry and your opponent's definitions. They go with short passing. Weather is dry. Sounds good to me. We got a deal. I'm going to go short as well. Magdiev, whatever. One of my central defenders is going to mark that solo striker there. And I'm going to leave the rest as they are, right? And then the game goes on. And here we go, right? See what we can do. My team is taking control of the game, but... Championship manager can betray me easily, as they might, because my team is not exactly amazing. This is my second season in Russia. And now a very important thing, this is why I'm doing this, is this. Keep an eye. Don't forget, you get your, your players marked, you get your weather sorted, your passing style according to your opponent, and then always keep an eye for this. Injuries. Shin injury, bad enough, but the, the worst of the worst are the knee injuries and the foot injuries. Those are very handicapping for the players. So, what I'm going to do, obviously, here is replace Ruben, and I'm going to replace this guy here for Alex as well. Okay? And I replaced my injured guys, and I want to keep an eye on any further injuries. So, make this roll a bit. Okay, we score. Maybe there's a potential injury here because this guy is 79, but no, he's just... Not the greatest player when it comes to stamina, so he drops a little bit faster than the rest, so all is rock and rolling. Keep an eye, I'm still dominating, they have a guy sent off, meaning that I should have removed my men marking there, there's no need for that anymore. Tech short, here we go, same story, all, all the way to the end, and boom, okay, I won. It's not a bad win at all, it dominated the game, my team is far from amazing, as I said, this is... Second division, got my qualification, and so far so good. I'm in third here, trying to harass the league, the Russian Premier League, whatever. So the basic principle that I wanted to show you was that. So, look at the weather, passing style, your opponent, do your man marking. Always look for your potential injuries. Knees and feet are the worst, right? But you can get shins, you can get shoulders you can get heads you can get whatever whatever there are so many potential injuries that you can get uh, but those would be the sum up then if you can if you're doing all right if you're doing all your best it's not it doesn't mean 100% that you might win but you're definitely increasing the your probabilities of winning pick your team remember that when you are changing the passing style during the game because you have to the weather is absolute crap it's just raining it's wet it's whatever you got to go on direct or so right when you do that keep an eye that you will need players probably with some jumping right so that's why i always play jumping pace and technique especially for the attacking players when i go direct of course the central defenders have to have jumping obviously i'm gonna and marking if possible in the rest blah 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 but if you're going to go and convert from short to direct, you will need players that can actually do the job for you in the air. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really tough. Even if you have the right passing selected, you are going to struggle. So have versatile players. Remember the video, at least, that I showed you guys about the, the characteristics I value for a player because I want my team to be versatile and not stuck with no dynamics whatsoever to a passing style, to a way of doing things, which is pretty boring and annoying, right? Rest-wise, 
Pick your tactic, pick your team. Remember the little basic macro and micro principles of tactics and enjoy the game. Keep it alive. And don't man mark the goalkeepers, okay? Have some fucking dignity. Hope you guys are checking it out. Leave your comments if you must, please. This is what we're here for, and I'll see you soon. Bye. C. M. Mario. Is he in the game?